Hello everybody, in this session we will be looking at the issues and quality assessment of the ground measurements. I would like to thank the organizers for giving us the opportunity to give this talk at this webinar and I hope you will enjoy it. I will be talking about solar measurements and why we need to perform quality assessment of these measurements before further processing. Quality assessment of solar measurement is a complex process Therefore, we have developed a lot of internal tools, which we are integrating into one software package named SDAT. Third part of this presentation will show some screens and features of this software. At the end, I will show a catalog of issues found in data during quality assessment to illustrate what can happen during measurement campaign and how to avoid mistakes. Let me introduce briefly our company. Since 2010, we have been developing a platform for fast access to reliable and accurate historical, recent and forecast data for almost any location in the world. To this date, our data and services have helped thousands of customers to build and operate tens of thousands of solar projects in our 100 countries. Several independent studies have confirmed that SolarGIS provides the most reliable and accurate data with the lowest uncertainty on the market. These data and tools which we provide help to reduce risk, increase transparency and help to build more profitable projects. So first, let's explain why ground measurements are so important. There are differences between the measured and satellite model data. Let's look at the comparison. Accuracy of satellite data is high, especially after site adaptation, what is correlation of satellite data with high quality ground measurements. Temporal resolution of satellite data is 10 or 15 minutes, what is usually more than enough for the majority of the cases. Until now, up to 27 years of data is available for download for almost any site in the world, in high consistency and without gaps. Yes, there are some limitations in terms of imperfections of models and input data. And this is field where excellent ground measurements can help. However, it is not an easy task. Accuracy of ground measurements highly depends on accuracy of instruments, their calibration, maintenance and cleaning. Gaps and consistency problems can occur and after measurement campaign data, quality control is always required. Typically, about one or two years of data in one minute resolution is available and in higher costs. Generally, if measurement campaign delivers accurate solar and meteorological data for particular project site, the highest benefit will be possibility to perform the site adaptation of models. This will finally result into reduced uncertainty, costs and risks of project. But we see a lot of struggling with measurement campaigns. Usually there are missing skills and knowledge about maintenance procedures or low standard practices. Very often we see sites with many meteorological stations delivering tons of measurements, but nobody cleans sensor regularly. Or even worse, data from these sensors are combined into one dataset as gap filling in case of failure of some sensor. So result of such practices is that measurements are not managed properly what degrades quality of whole measurement campaign. To avoid or minimize risk of wasting the resources, it is good to plan campaigns with only several pieces of high quality sensors. Depending on sites, two or three secondary standard pyranometers may be enough to have redundant data for case of failure of sensor or to have reference for comparison between them. If risk of frost, dew or higher dust exists, it is good to use ventilation unit. For DNI measurements, pure heliometers are recommended. Other sensors like RSR or SPN1 have higher uncertainty, so they may be used as a complementary sensors to main measurements. All this hardware needs a regular cleaning and maintenance. Everything depends on site, but one or two maintenance visits per week is a good standard. Regular calibration is required once per one or two years. All this must be covered by trained personnel. After the campaign is finished, we advise you to perform measured data, quality control by the knowledgeable data analyst. 
In case you are interested, our company offers such services to feel free to reach out to us. The high accuracy ground measurements can be used to improve the accuracy of the historical satellite time series data. This process is called site adaptation. In this case, we need at least one year of measurements to catch all weather seasons on site. If you have two years of data, this is even better and will result in even higher accuracy. There is also an option to site adapt not just the historical time series, but also real-time performance evaluation data and even forecasts. Until now, we have processed measurement data from more than 1000 sites provided by our customers or public meteo stations. So we are quite experienced in this process and I want to share with you some of our findings. Data quality assessment is a process that consists of several steps. First, you need a good description of the equipment and instruments that have been used. We need to know what was used for measurements, how it was arranged and how it was maintained. It is important to know how measurements were mounted, if there were some shading objects like wind measurement masts or fences, or how stable was pyranometer mounting from a misalignment point of view, or access to instruments from cleaning point of view. We need to know how often were the instruments calibrated. It is also good to have calibration certificates. You should keep records of when the equipment has been cleaned. It is good to have push button for maintenance staff or gate entry sensors and record events together with data to know when cleaning occurred. In such case, when the cleaning event is recorded and pyranometers were cleaned during sunny midday, we can estimate the soiling rate of the sensor. The second step is the conversion of plenty of formats and data import into the database. Typically, data is delivered in CSV or text files, sometimes in XLS or NetCDF. Very often measurements are divided into several files, which increases the risk of data loss, so it is recommended to have one file for all measurements. It is important to define time reference as well as measurement units. Typically, one minute data is a standard, but often 5 or 10 minutes or hourly data is provided. From our side, we prefer a minute or sub-hourly temporal resolution and also time reference is important for further processing. Next, we need to do a time reference check. Solar irradiation is dependent on the position of the sun, so we need to know the exact time for further data quality tests. Issues are time shifts and drift, unclear timestamp definition or changing timestamp. To avoid these problems, exact site coordinates are needed with at least 5 decimal points. Further, it is recommended to perform regular data logger time synchronization or use GPS receiver to make sure you have correct data logger timestamps. It is good practice to record timestamps together with measured data. And it is important to avoid time processing in tools such as Excel. Also combining measurements from several metal stations with different time references is not a good practice. Fourth step of data quality assessment is automatic quality check based on numerical methods. With solar geometry algorithm, it is possible to detect sun below horizon. Irradiation at given time may appear only in given theoretical range of minimum and maximum values, thus all outliers can be rejected. Automatic quality check can also detect some data logger problems, where values are not recorded properly, resulting into high or low or not changing records. Limitation of this method is that usually can detect only larger errors. Small defects are hard to detect, so it is task for visual inspection. There are only some basic tests available for GTA measurements. Due to some additional factors, it is hard to perform good quality control of the tilted irradiance. Fifth and by far most time-consuming step is visual control of measured data. 
This requires trained operator to sit and check measured profiles day by day, hour by hour. He must mark intervals where data is wrong or suspicious. This is a last step in quality control where data problems can be detected. Issues detected only at this stage of control are not easily detectable by automatic algorithms, so human interaction is needed. Typical problems may be caused by hardware or electrical issues like wrong calibration constants or missing or persistent values due to data logger or battery problem. Other problems may have mechanical origins like instruments leveling or tracking issues. Another big source of measurement disturbing phenomena is nature, where snow, dew, frost, dirt, soiling or bird droppings occur frequently. In this case, the biggest issue is that if maintenance is not performed regularly, these defects are detected only after a significant amount of time passed, the quality of usable data is reduced. Last step of quality assessment is final evaluation of all previously performed tests. All input information are summarized and evaluated in summary table and each item has its own color flag for visual differentiation. Flagged measurements are sorted into three groups according to their acceptance. Data may be accepted or accepted but with higher uncertainty considered or wrong data is excluded. Then accepted data may be used for comparison with satellite data, for site adaptation, gap filling or for aggregations. Sometimes occur situations where so much measured data was excluded that site adaptation is not possible. In SolarGIS we have processed a lot of ground measurements, so tools for quality control were badly needed. Some of them we have developed internally and now we want to publish them as one analytical tool called SDAT. We wanted to bring a specialized tool for solar and PV professionals to analyze visualize and quality check the data. There are some tools already on the market. Our current tools are focused mainly on solar data, but with further development we will add also tools for PV and metal data processing. So as that should help with the import of the various data formats. You create a database where you can store measurements from all your sensors. You can, for instance, keep track of the type of sensor, name of the site, location. This way you organize all your data in a neat way and then you can visualize it, flag it, do calculations and statistics, compare, adjust and so on. It's optimized to work with large amounts of data, so it is much faster to work with than application such Excel. If several incomplete datasets are available, SDAT integrated tools are able to consolidate these datasets into one piece. There is a large number of analytical tools available for instance to average the data and show monthly statistics. It is possible to generate a typical meteorological year and export it in format for direct use in some PV simulation software. There are tools to detect and correct issues time reference tool, shading tool or physical limits tool. Our plan is to finish first version in second quarter of next year. Together with implementing of collected feedback from public testing, also a development of new automatic or semi-automatic tools will continue. As these tools will be finished and tested, they will be smoothly integrated into existing software pack, so portfolio of SDA services will constantly grow. For the last part, I have prepared a list of few examples and errors which we have detected in datasets. It is not a full list, it is just an illustration what can happen during the measurement campaign. This is an example of good dataset with no detected errors and some daily profiles. As I mentioned before, it is not easy to obtain such dataset. The majority of data usually have some flaws. On the right side, there are some links for further study or inspiration how to perform a good measurement campaign. So let's check some issues. These pictures illustrate the results of the so-called time reference check. This error was automatically detected 
and the upper picture shows a shift of values of the blue chart by several hours. Values are misaligned and need to be moved right to the correct time location. The bottom picture shows a similar situation. We have used a clearness index here. Morning red values are not aligned with afternoon blue values due to time shifts. This defect was repaired by the SDAT shifting tool. Shading detection tool is able to find horizon line in measured data. Best results are obtained with DNI measurements. Pictures show horizon line in sun height plot and in two year heat map plot. Bottom daily profiles are illustrating effect of horizon shading during morning and evening hours. Physical limits is another automatic quality control tool. Here we see abnormally high and totally wrong measured DNI values. Several types of visualization tools in SDAT allow easy detect this problem also by visual inspection. Biggest pictures show daily profiles when only DNI is affected. Top right blue heat map has several time slots with such distorted data and problem is also visible on average DNI daily profile for August. Consistency check is perfect tool for measurements where all three solar components were measured by independent instruments. Red flags on all three charts are showing samples which were marked and removed due to consistency problems. As visible on top daily profiles, this error can occur during any part of day, resulting in strange patterns in scatter plots on the right side. Bottom picture contains information about occurrence of consistency problems during whole measurement campaign. The consistency check cannot be applied to RSR and SPN1 instruments because only GHI and diffuse values are measured. DNI is calculated and consistency check is applicable only if you have separate measurements of all three components, global, diffuse and direct. Data logger problems are also possible to detect by both automatic and visual checks. Here we see several distorted days in the top picture and one distorted evening in the bottom picture. The source of problems may be in the data logger itself. This can happen with wrong settings, overloaded inputs, bad cable connections or cable paths. If signal cables are tied together with power lines, High frequencies may induce into low-level signals and destroy the measurements. Dew or frost, as you can see on the dome of this pyranometer, typically occur during cold mornings where the glass dome is covered by small drops, which are distorting measurements. We need the sun to evaporate this. Here ventilation units or heated domes may help to remove this issue. These pictures illustrate the situation of moving parts where the sensor tracker lost power or got stuck. Usually it is the case of pure heliometers or diffuse pyranometers shaded by shading ball. In both cases diffuse will be equal to global irradiation and DNI is not measured or measured only as peaks as we see here. Another type of mechanical problem is the insufficient length of the shading arm mounted on RSR. In this case, during a certain period of the year, the sun was in a position that the rotating arm of RSR was not able to create a shadow over the sensor, so diffuse measurements were distorted. As in RSR instruments, direct is calculated from measured global and diffuse irradiance, so this fault resulted in wrong DNI measurements. It has to be noted that the consistency check is not able to detect this type of error. Insufficient cleaning is often a problem of measurement campaigns. Here the red color shows a slow degradation of measurements due to dirt on measurements. At this point of time the sensor was probably cleaned, so after this point we get back to good measurements. This defect is also detectable on scatter plots when measured data are compared to calculated values. Bottom right picture is showing this situation where measured values are not able to reach levels expected by calculations and are marked by a red cloud above the diagonal line. If ground measurements are compared to satellite model data, calibration errors may be detected. 
Here red color is showing ground measurements with incorrect amplitude. The red values are too high and this error was probably caused by wrong calibration constants that was set in data logger. Also, a different instrument that does not belong to the used calibration constant could have been used in the measurement campaign in this case. This slide illustrates the situation where two sensors are used for redundancy of measurements. In this case, there were two types of instruments. The first one was a thermopile pyranometer and the second one was a silicon pyranometer. The silicon one is slowly degrading over time, the blue color chart, so there is an increased difference between these two sensors. This picture also illustrates the importance of regular calibration. Even if the sensor degrades over time, with proper calibration it will never go over uncertainty guaranteed by the manufacturer. And last picture show completely bad measurement campaign where no usable data has been recorded in campaign lasted more than 15 months. Small green profile in top right is reference of good measurements, so we would expect to see something like this. Alright, we are at the end. Ground measurements are important record of local microclimatic conditions. To have most benefits of them, we need to perform high quality measurements and these require to pay high attention to instruments, maintenance procedures and quality controls of measured data. If everything is done perfectly, high quality of data is achievable. To support this, we are working on SDAT software package which will help with automatization or semi-automatization of steps in data quality control. This can be expected for testing in first half of next year. Then development will continue and new feature will be implemented as plugins. If you have any questions or you want us to send you this presentation, feel free to write us at contact at solargis.com and thank you all and enjoy the rest of the sessions.